do you want to see my microscope and my histology setup? Probably not. Um, it's kind of strange for somebody that's approaching a million subscribers on YouTube to uh, seemingly self-sabotage by creating a series of histology videos. Well, let me tell you, tell you why I'm doing this and I'll give you three reasons why you should also be learning histology if you're studying anatomy. I'm not trying to sell my videos to you, I'm trying to sell science to you, right? Histology. So here's my microscope, Olympus CX41. This is a nice, solid, heavyweight microscope. You can buy these in lots of different configurations. We probably bought this about 20 years ago when we started here, when we started the medical program here to teach live histology from. Um, we had a camera on the top here, so imagine 20 years ago, digital cameras were different to how they are now. There was a, a big round CCD camera on there, which I guess must have done video, must have done, right? I remember it was very expensive, thousands and thousands of pounds, and probably wasn't even high def video, so I put one of my one of my Canons on there uh, and uh, got some adapters so it does 4K. It's not the greatest sensor, but it's it's pretty good. That's just a tube for the camera. So there's a prism in here. So the, the light is down here, um, comes up, shines. It's, it's focused. There's a there's a, another module down there that focuses the light to a central point there. We put the slide there and then it goes up through the objective lens which is the expensive bit. And then there's a prism in here, so it separates the light. So it goes to your eyes and up to the camera. So I can see, and the camera can see, and I can adjust the diopter on this so that my focus hopefully matches the camera's focus. So here are my objective lenses. So there's my four times, which I think is a little bit soft. You can buy these, uh, you know, different sort of qualities. There's the 10 times, there's the 20 times. 20 times is really good. And there's the 40 times, which again feels a little bit soft. Uh, this one is 100 times, but that's an oil, yeah, that's an oil mount lens. So I need to, because of refraction indexes of light and how light travels through different media, I'd need to put oil onto the, uh, the slide, which is really messy, of course. I haven't bothered with that. And also, I think 40 times is enough. So this, this objective lens will magnify the image 40 times. Then as the light travels up into my eyes, uh, this also magnifies the image by another 10 times to my eyes. So that's why I talk about having 400 times magnification with that and that combined. But the truth is that um, it depends on the the size, well, if you're looking at it on a screen, it depends on the size of the screen because that'll make it bigger or smaller. Back in the day, we used to measure what we could see under the the lens and then use that when printing our images for publications and stuff so we could say that the scale is 50 microns long or 100 microns long or whatever. Here we've got general controls. So there's the light and that's what changes the brightness of the light. Um, so as you... As you look at higher magnifications, you need more light. And here we've got gross focus and fine focus, which will move the stage up and down. And the uh, the slide sits on the stage. Then I can move the, the slide around by controlling these wheels here. So it's a bit of a bit of a computer game when I'm trying to film it to try and get it somewhat smooth. You might see when I was setting this up, I got some nice uh, wireless lights. Wait, so that's how I, I light myself. More light equals more good. I use this monitor here to um, to see what's on that camera there, so I can see what's under the microscope. Mostly, so I can adjust how much light there is. And then I added a second monitor there, which is actually for uh, for this camera, which I mount over there so it's looking at me so I can, you know, so you can still see me. I'm not just a disembodied voice over the slide. So the main reason I'm doing this, like all my videos, is um, I'm making these videos for students at Swansea University. The medicine program has got so big, we've got so many students now, we can't get them all in a microscope lab. We've already split in the year in half, and now we've got so many, we can't get them into a lab 
To teach them about histology, my first video was about how we make a slide and what a slide is. And uh, my second video was uh, looking at all the tissues of the body. And that's generally what we do in the lab at the beginning of the year. Can't do that anymore. So I thought, let's make some videos. And I thought for those students, it would be very helpful to have some nice, gentle, slow videos where we're actually looking at slides under the microscope rather than just a picture. Because a picture, I think, can be very... Um, you get lost, can't you? If somebody just shows you a picture of a tissue and says, this is a picture of a tissue, it's difficult to know what you're looking at. Whereas if you start wide and say, this is what we're looking at, and then go in, zoom in, and look, move around, I think you can then get a better picture of what you're looking at. And the other reason for doing this is, of course, like my other videos, if I make any e-learning, I share it widely just in case anybody else finds it useful. And I know there are lots of people, medical students and anatomy students and other students studying histology around the world. So making histology videos feels like it's useful for them. Sure, I know it's not going to be super popular. It's not going to be super mainstream. It's not going to be for everybody, although I think it should be. Um, it's for the people that need it, which again is why I make the videos. If I'm useful for one person, ten people, I think that's a good reason for doing it, right? Here's my box of slides. So I've got I've got a bunch of slides here, and I've got other other collections hiding away, and um, these have all been donated by people, people that have retired or the families of people that have retired. But this collection is excellent. It's I, I imagine this has been compiled from a wide range of sources and put together here and most of what I need is in here it's um, it's it's really really nice and a professor at Swansea retired recently so gave me all his slides so I've got more slides in here I've got more slides back there and I've actually got a lot of slides in the lab, a lot of pathology slides as well that have been donated from some private but large collections. Uh, and I've used those occasionally. We saw, I think, some of those from the 1930s. You might have seen those. They're amazing. So I've got, I've got everything I need, so why not? I do feel now like it's a bit like getting you to eat your greens. Um, and I am overdoing it a little bit because next week I'm also going to try and convince medical students that they need to learn embryology. <laughs> I will give you three reasons why you should study histology. Number one, you're studying anatomy already. Um, it's easier to study gross anatomy because your eyes can see it, but the cells are what make up the gross anatomy. So histology, microscopic anatomy, the cells and tissues of the body, they're the same thing. They are anatomy. So to get the full picture, you need to look at the microscopic anatomy as well. You need to look at the building blocks of the body. In school, you probably learnt about cells. and You probably learnt a bit of anatomy, the heart, the eye, that sort of thing. Now you're learning anatomy at a higher level. That means you need to understand the histology as well, cells at a higher level. You need to understand about the different types of cells in the body, the different tissues and how all that is arranged. This is anatomy, it's just anatomy beyond the resolution of your eyes. It's still something you need to understand. Uh, when you understand the organisation of the cells and the tissues of the body, then you can understand how it all works, you can understand why the gross anatomy looks like that, and you can understand disease. For example, the liver, you need to understand those microscopic channels between the rows of hepatocytes that blood passes down in the liver to understand how liver disease can affect blood flow. You need to understand how um, inside the small intestine you've got the folds, the plique circularis, and then you've got the villi, and then you've got the microvilli, so you understand how detrimental celiac disease is when you start to lose that ultrastructure and what that means for function and what that means for recovery and repair. So you need to understand the cells and the tissues for normal anatomy and pathology. So that's number one. Number two, if you're a healthcare professional, um, well, cancer basically, and the language of cancer. Um, adenocarcinoma, well, carcinoma, blastoma, lymphoma, astrocytoma, germ cell tumour, sarcoma. 
What do all those words mean? Well, they, each cancer comes from a cell. You need to understand the cells and the organisation of the cells to understand the names of these cancers and what these mean, right? So um, a lymphoma is a cancer formed from uh, a lymphocyte, from an immune, a white cell, an immune cell. Um, carcinoma, uh, a cell has come from the epithelium. Uh, sarcoma, a cell has come from the connective tissues of the body. Uh, blastoma, the cancer has come from an undifferentiated cell type. Astrocytoma, if you've looked at the brain, you see all the astrocytes everywhere. It's obvious what an astrocytoma is, and so on and so on. If you've looked at the cells and the tissues of the body, you understand what the words mean, but you understand what the words mean. You un you've seen the cells and the tissues. You understand what that cancer is and where it's come from. Um, and to be honest, that applies to lots of other diseases. We talked about the aorta this week, atherosclerosis. I wanted to look at the layers and talk about what atherosclerosis really means in terms of the structure and aortic dissection and what have you. And by looking at the microscopic anatomy, I think it just becomes obvious in your mind. But cancer's the big one, right? Because cancer's the big one. Number three, and then you can go out and play. Um, sorry, was that inappropriate? Maybe. I'm a dad. Um, number three, microscopic anatomy is the future of anatomical research and understanding. There are whole, rec well, biology research and pathology careers, medicine pathology careers, are based around the microscope. Um, when, when we're trying to understand how the body works, we're looking at cells, we're looking at what cells do. That involves the microscope. So when you're looking at a tissue that you're investigating, you need to understand what cells you expect to find there, how you expect them to be arranged, what tissues you expect to find there. Um, and whatever experiment you're doing, you'll then want to have a look at those cells and what those cells are doing and see how that's different. And not just light microscopy, but then fluorescent in situ hybridization, um, and all sorts of other microscope, ba microscope based techniques like confocal microscopy, things I do in a very dark room or used to do with fluorescent tags and stuff, which was very cool and lots of fun. If you're studying biology and you're looking at going into research, the microscope, histology, cells and tissues are likely to form a big part of your future work. Um, I can see that if you're going into medicine, it probably won't. But more knowledge is more good, right? Also, this isn't really for, it's just fascinating and beautiful. I love it. Okay, I, I do have a pretty strong bias, but I like, I want to know how the body works. I love learning things. Microscopic anatomy is part of that. But if your future is in research, then the time you spend working on histology now will benefit you a lot in the future, I promise. All right, I don't know if I've made my case or not, <laughs> but I tried. Um, but it is knowledge, and it is the future of knowledge, and it is really important now, and it is going to be really important in the future. Um, you look in nature and science, and what do you see? You see lots of pictures of cells, because, yeah. Anyway, um, I know that it's difficult, I appreciate that, and it can be a little bit, um, seems separated from the body, but it's a method of looking at the body and a method of understanding the body and a method of understanding biology and not just anatomy and the human body, but other bodies too. Right, I'm going to be back at the microscope next week. Don't know what I'm going to talk about yet, but I might see you there. <laughs>